Joined by Thomas Crampton, you are the Asia Pacific Director of 360 Digital Influence with Ogilvy PR, based in Hong Kong. A former journalist, a recovering journalist, as he said. We've just been speaking here about how companies should be approaching social media and in terms of uh, reputation management. Absolutely. Social media is an absolutely crucial part of any business going forward. And the way to know that is it's being used by all the consumers. Uh, the consumers of any business now are using social media, whether that business is a consumer-focused business or one that is selling B2B. Uh, social media is a crucial way for consumers to make a decision before purchasing. They'll do searching and they will often, and often end up on blog sites or forums. Uh, and for a, somebody in a business-to-business -business company considering the services or, or products of a business-to-business -business company will look at the reviews. They will research and look online and often again what they will end up on is social media websites. So pretty much every company should have some sort of a social media policy and a social media strategy. If they don't have a social media strategy, that is a strategy in and of itself because they are going to be spoken about by consumers and by people online whether they are involved or not. Because uh, as you showed in your workshop, there are examples of where companies can get attacked through, social, uh, through the social media channels. Sure, there's the negative part of it, which is you're, you're going to be talked about and possibly attacked whether you are involved in social media or not. There's the positive part about that, which is people, if you can connect with people who are interested in your company or like your product, then you will have uh, a, a much higher likelihood of keeping them as loyal customers who come back and recommend to their friends. You gave the example here of a, a tech firm that was having problems with a particular blogger. How did that resolve itself? Right, that, that, that was an example of where a major technology firm in, in California was having a problem with a blogger in Australia. Only in the era of the internet would an Australian blogger worry a major California tech, tech company. That blogger was quite influential uh, and was writing nasty things about that company's products every time they come out. They, they create a technology that is quite hefty, comes out about once every six months, and he would always pan it. So we looked, they, they, asked, they asked us to look in to see who this blogger was. We looked in to see who this blogger was and determined that this was somebody who, for whatever reason, had a hatred of that company and would, we thought, always write negatively about that uh, company's products. So contacting that person would likely only aggravate them and make the problem even worse. So you, you, didn't think, you didn't try to find out what the issue was that this person had? It was clear that this was something that would not be resolved by a friendly conversation with the CEO. It was, it was clear that this was something, a, a, a passion this person had against this company for whatever reason. We couldn't really understand what the, the root of it was, to be honest. So instead our strategy, our advice to the company was, look, let's forget about this guy, write him off, let's engage with other members of the Australian tech community and talk to them about the product, talk to them about the company and see what their views are and then engage with them. That's what we did over the period of a few months. Uh, we did things like allowed them access to people very high up in the research and development, it gave them uh, tours of, of, of what, was, what were the upcoming products, a sense of where the company was going, all these sort of things which these bloggers very much enjoyed and appreciated. And then the, the program wound down. The company from uh, uh, California came out with their next product. Lo and behold, uh, it was panned by that same blogger. Uh, before I had a chance to get involved in the whole thing, this is all happening overnight on the time cycles between Hong Kong and San Francisco, uh, what happened in Australia was a very interesting thing. Many of those bloggers whom we had engaged with, and some whom we had not, started turning on the blogger who was attacking that company. And they said, wait a minute, you call yourself a professional tech blogger or a tech blogger, but you only write bad things about this company. What are you thinking? Why are you doing this? What, what, is, what is your problem? Are you really a, 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 an objective observer or are you somebody who's running a crusade? And what quickly turned from a negative review of this product became the blogger defending themselves against these accusations. So it changed the entire dynamic. And essentially putting the blogger on the back foot. Yes, it put, it put him on the, on the back foot and, and made him defend himself rather than be on the attack about this company's product. You were a journalist with the New York Times and the International Herald Tribune. How did you develop a different tone of voice as a blogger? Yes, there's, there's a very different way to operate in social media as opposed to 
traditional media such as newspapers. It's the way that you write. Uh, uh, you, 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 the writing is much more of an iterative process. You're not trying to get a final product. You are developing something over time. I would never have dreamed of writing a newspaper article where I would put out a question, you know, does anybody know any more about this? Whereas in blogging you would tend to do that. The length of what you write is quite different. The approach, I, I tend to break into chunks what I write online. So it's a very different kind of style of writing and approach to what you are doing. You're more trying to spark conversation within a community than you are trying to give the definitive answer to what happened today, uh, August 28th, 2011. Is it easy for a company to develop a conversational tone rather than just push out things that look like pure marketing? Developing a personality is something that we cannot do for a company. Companies have to develop their own personalities and we can help them through the process of figuring out what their personality is, but we can't invent something. This is, you can't fake social media. If you're faking social media, you're misleading people, which is a bad thing to do. You're misleading your customers. Uh, and somebody's going to figure out that that's not really you. So we need to develop an authentic tone of voice. We really need to have an authentic sense of what that company is, uh, who they are. Uh, and then what we do is we help enable them to bring that authentic voice out and amplify it as much as possible. You said this morning that it was a great time to be a journalist because of the perspective of social media and storytelling. Could you elaborate a bit further on that? Yeah, this, this, this is not a great time to be a journalist. This is the best time ever in the history of humanity to be a journalist and a storyteller. Journalism is all about storytelling. Journalism is all about figuring out what's happening, what's going on, and, and expressing it and telling it. Uh, in the past, the only way that you could tell a story that you cared about was to go to an editor, try and convince the editor that that was a worthwhile story. Even if the editor believed in you, the page one editor might not believe in you, and you had to work for a newspaper anyways to get that story out to a million people. With social media, you own the platform, you can tell the story, and if other people want to, want to find that story and read about that story or watch that video that you've created, suddenly you are empowered to do that. And there's multiple stories of you know, bands that started out with a single YouTube video that they stuck up, uh, people who started blogs just because they had a passion about baking cupcakes, uh, uh, these very narrow sort of topics, or, or just plain old good storytellers. And suddenly the internet has allowed people to reach much, much broader audiences than ever before. Well, Thomas Crampton of uh, Ogilvy PR, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.